So I'm sure everyone has heard by now that there is an alien galactic federation that apparently exists and that we have been in contact with them for some time. So with this renewed interest in aliens, I decided to look at some databases on the internet of UFO sightings around places I used to live at and where I currently live just to see what I would find and well some of them are actually pretty creepy and cool. So today we're going to look at one of those places. Actually, it's a town called Princeton, West Virginia. It is my hometown. And some of these are things that I would have thought I would have experienced, but I guess I missed out on them. So I'm going to read you three, maybe four experiences and sightings that took place over the last year to three years that really caught my eye. This sighting occurred around January 2020 at around 9 p.m. in Princeton, West Virginia. The sighting took place over the course of one to two hours, according to the witness, and the sighting was reported about 11 days after the incident. The witness reported a large array of lights resembling the Aurora Borealis were seen over the skies of Mercer County. An array of greenish lights were seen in the sky, and the witness says it reminded them of the Aurora Borealis. It is kind of interesting that they note that twice, but... Lights seem to fluctuate brightness. I cannot find any other reports of a similar thing happening around this time. Which is pretty interesting because you would think something of that magnitude that looked like the Aurora Borealis would have been reported. But since no one else reported it, it is possible and probable that many other people did see it and decided not to say anything. Or maybe people just weren't looking up that night. This sighting took place in January of 2014 near Princeton, and the sighting lasted about an hour, according to the witness. The sighting took place around 8 p.m. and was reported later the same night. The witness states that they saw bright, multi-lit cylinder shape, red lights, in the sky. The object appeared to be hovering in the sky over the Princeton area, and they go on to say that they were on a high ridge and the object was clearly visible for some time. The object would go side to side very quickly, with many small red lights would appear around it and then go off away from it. Many other white aircraft lights flew to and from it, and it was clear that they were real, like they were checking it out and then flying away from it. The object was bright shimmering before it gradually, very slowly, rose upward. The witnesses say that they got tired of watching it and they went inside because it was minus 10 degree wind chill. Now this is a very, very interesting sighting simply because they did have a great vantage point and they saw it for such a great amount of time. This sighting is very different from the other two I've talked about so far and some might find it disturbing. The incident occurred on April 4, 2007 and was reported two years later. What I find interesting about this is that the sighting occurred around 10 a.m. and lasted only a little while, but the after effects could be described as traumatizing. The witnesses says they were watching TV with some friends at the time. We can't smoke in his house. The three of us went outside on the porch to smoke. They were facing east, and I was the only one facing southwest, and I looked up and saw it. It was a huge blue orb in the sky, I would have to say the size of two school buses put together, and it was very close. It was moving southeast and northwest very fast, close to the ground. No trail or anything to tell you the truth, it gave me the chills. I was so shaken I told everyone there, and they just laughed at me like I was a telling joke. But it was not a joke, and I still haven't been able to get any sleep or do anything else function well since. And the reason I'm posting this is because just the other night, which is the end of May 2020, I had a dream. I was in my car, it was night, and one of my friends was driving, but I didn't like it. And we went into the intersection, and all the power went out. He said that he knew what it was and started to look up into the sky, and at the same time, I felt a very violent vibration on my body. It even affected my vision, it was so violent, shaking me. And I felt myself being pulled in a thousand different ways, like my particles being pulled apart and moving up. Then I woke up abruptly, so scared, and I remember so vividly, and I could felt a scratch on my side. And when I looked, I saw a pale white line, but after I scratched it, it was gone. So first off, this is pretty disturbing 
the fact that, first off, we have a UFO sighting happening in the daytime, one that is seemingly kind of run-of-the-mill, seeing a light in the sky, lasts a few seconds, and then it's gone. What's interesting is that it is very close. But as for the dreams and the visions that they had afterwards, that's where it gets very interesting for me. There are many UFO cases where people experience stuff like this, but typically you hear it in mainstream media and on TV, and it has to do with abductions. I'm not saying that this lady was abducted, but something very, very strange and potentially disturbing was happening here. This next setting is my personal favorite because the animals in the house were severely affected by something that lingered for a while. The sighting took place on June 22, 2018 at around 1 a.m. and the sighting was reported around 7 a.m. that morning, once again taking place in Princeton. The witnesses says they live close to Interstate 77. They were by themselves and I stayed behind while the rest of the family went on vacation to take care of the pets. It was around 1, 1.30 in the morning when one of our dogs started to dig down the bedroom door trying to get inside, not like her at all. She's normally asleep around this time. Then I noticed our German Shepherd mix was acting super nervous and panting really hard. I went to use the bathroom and both dogs and one of the cats followed me. The dog that was digging down the door even tried to jump on my lap. I thought, well, maybe they need to use the bathroom for some reason, even though they never go out at this time. So I leash up the dogs and take them outside for a short walk. I always look at the planets. I love them. While admiring how bright Mars was, I noticed there were three bright lights in the sky moving. They were pretty close together, and the middle one was slightly higher than the other two. The thing that weirded me out the most was that it made no sound. It was flying away from us, going towards southbound on 77. It made me feel very uneasy. I stood there watching it for a few minutes and then went back inside. The dogs calmed down for the most part, but were still acting on guard. I have no explanation for the way they were acting. Both dogs and one of the cats acted weird. The other inside cat I couldn't find, our outside cat I couldn't find, and my ferret was in the bedroom with me asleep. There were no storms in the area, and we didn't have any earthquakes. I just kept telling myself it was military until I told my boyfriend about it and drew a picture of how the lights were set up. He told me it may have been a UFO. Now, the first thing I want to say about this case is typically when people, and this is kind of true for the paranormal too, reading experiences, when people go straight to, hey, it could have been this, or I think it was that, that's usually a red flag because they already have a predetermined idea as to what they're experiencing, and they might not be open to the possibility of other things happening. However, I do make an exception in this case simply because they are very descriptive in what happened. They seem to have a working knowledge of the night sky in terms of where the planets are, the constellations, and they just seem generally like someone who would know potential explanations for what it is. So this is the one that really stands out to me out of the four that I have talked about today. And it does sound like they were describing a triangular craft. For the size, it's really tough to tell. But the thing that really interested me about this was the fact that she was affected and the animals around her were all affected even after the craft had gone away. Now, kind of like the last one, this is common in a lot of alien visitation, alien abduction type stuff. And, you know, this is true for the paranormal, too. It's said that animals can sense this stuff long before and longer after humans can. So the animals were probably picking up on something, maybe a frequency, a message, maybe telepathically that she couldn't have picked up on. But one thing is for sure, there's something strange going on in the night sky above Princeton, West Virginia.